Welcome in, folks. We are live with Vinnie Eastwood from the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Vinnie, are you there? I am, and I am indeed. This is good to hear. This is a live simulcast on uh, live365.com, and uh, it's a unique thing for the In Wish Art Show because we haven't done this with uh, anyone before, especially Vinnie. So uh, welcome aboard, Vinnie. Um, um, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Well, you know, it's it's a bit of a simulcast, so as well as welcoming you, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ian Wishart Show, we're also welcoming you to the, the Vinny Eastwood Show. Um, this suddenly feels really right to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just... <laughs> I was um, I was actually just arguing with a whole bunch of people from the uh, the Kiwi Journalists Association, Ian, and they're all like really arrogant and like abusive and things like this. Anybody talks about anything to do with world government conspiracy or the or the climate change hoax or or, or anything really that's real, you get abused for. And I was like, these are the people that are calling themselves journalists. And um, somebody asked me what is the the pinnacle what are you what are you actually really trying to do in terms of journalism and i thought to myself you know i guess the idea should be to balance credibility and morality and i couldn't think of any any person who personifies more than that not in this country in the new zealand field uh than yourself ian that's very kind of you Vinny. um yeah, it, it's it's a big issue, I think, for, for journalism, basically. I'm not sure that we have our game quite right yet as a profession. Although you could be, um, uh, would, would be surprised that a lot of people uh, within the profession certainly don't agree with you. Yeah, well, I think the problem is this. I think that um, journalism has turned from a profession which it used to be into being uh, an agenda-driven um uh, profession that is sees itself as part of the establishment, uh, virtually the marketing arm of the establishment, and the, and the movement between journalism and PR these days is so um, wide that this sort of uh, is an illustration, I think, of, 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 of the problem that we face because journalists are moving back and forth from news to PR, politics, uh, left, right and centre. Just look at the Shane Tarima uh, controversy. Here he was standing for Labour, uh, or trying to stand for Labour, didn't make it, went back to news, ends up running Labour Party political uh, meetings from within TVNZ's building. They should have seen that one coming. Well, and also there's MediaWorks. What was his name? Stephen Joyce was CEO of MediaWorks, and then he becomes the government communication minister and then brokers, like, what was it, a 30 or $40 million bailout in unpaid broadcasting fees that MediaWorks couldn't afford because the advertisers can't be bothered advertising with them because nobody watches them because they suck. All right, that's my interpretation. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, the cynic in you. Um, I mean, look, I, I, I think the problem with my fellow journalist is this. They see themselves as evangelists uh, for various ideas and theories, and they go out there and they print this stuff unquestioningly. Um, you look at uh, their stand on vaccination, on fluoride, on uh, food additives, a range of things that the media should be far more questioning about, and they're just not. Incidentally, one of them um, objected to me posting a video of uh, Dr. Laurie Brett, who's a uh, you know fairly, fairly well known dentist in this country uh, up in Whangarei, who's uh, quite, quite got you know um, amazing credibility when it comes to questioning the science behind fluoride or the lack thereof. And what one of these journalists uh, criticised me for is putting up his version, Dr. Laurie's version, and not counterbalancing it with the mainstream version my perspective was that if you're going to be covering something that the mainstream isn't cover that because all of the rest of it's done okay if people want to be propagandized about the uh, false benefits of fluoride we have the ministry of health cracking down on everybody we have the media in everybody's back pockets they don't need any help pro propagating their propaganda the people speaking out against it on the other hand those are the only people that i'm interested in helping otherwise what's the point ian well that's one of the criticisms that i've always faced from my colleagues in the media uh, because investigate magazine has um uh, done some uh, you know pithy stories over the years, and we're accused of being one-sided uh, in terms of politics. But I've I've said to them, look, I'm playing a long game here because if you go back to the 1990s and the wine box investigation, the Paradise Conspiracy, that sort of thing, National was in power, and they got a bollocking from Investigate Magazine. Um, Labor came into power after that, and that was the era of Investigate, and they got a bollocking from Investigate Magazine. 
National are back in power, and we have uh, criticised them on a number of fronts and have certainly not been fulsome in support. Uh, the Daylight Robbery book featuring um, uh, John Key on the front cover is just an <laughs> example, of, you know, questioning again the wisdom of asset sales. We are there to question whoever is in power without fear or favour. And I think that's what my colleagues in the media forget. They become wedded to the politics, as in Shane Taruma again. Um, they they wear their political colours on their sleeves and they forget that they're journalists first, first and foremost rather than um, evangelists for whatever political belief that they hold. And this is this is where our profession is, is running aground because uh, a lot of the journalists who are in practice don't disclose their political beliefs, but their political beliefs govern how they write their stories. And that that's a problem because the, the, the public see no transparency. It's editorialising under the guise of <clears throat> journalism, isn't it, to a large extent? That's ex- that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, well, this this in- inherently um, to me is a conflict of interest, I think, and also there's the element of uh, can you run a successful journalism business in this country can you actually make enough money to survive based purely on reporting the truth now if you want to make large quantities of money i'm not sure if that's entirely possible you you can't become a multi-millionaire um by only telling the truth because ultimately many of the power brokers in this country and many others who are holding m- much of the finances and at bay and and what have you are the ones who are more likely to be uh, advertising on television and and what have you and certainly would withdraw their funding if their business interests were threatened by a little something called the truth yeah this is this is right and i think um we are a testimony to exactly this problem if you look at investigate magazine uh, when it started off, we had more readers than Metro Magazine currently has. We had absolutely no advertising agency support because we were seen as politically incorrect. They didn't like our flavour of the truth. Uh, so although we're a glossy magazine with a big readership, we did not get supported. It was just actively discouraged. When the Labour government was in power, they made sure that their advertising agency handed out contracts to all the media who were favourable, and none of the media who had ever criticised uh, Labour got uh, advertising contracts for, for various government agencies that were doing big ad, ad campaigns through the uh, 20, 2000s. So yeah, we certainly weren't making money from advertising. That meant that we as a magazine had to rely entirely on our readership and subscriber base to make money. Uh, and you don't become a millionaire off that. And then you get people who say, oh, well, all the hard work you're doing, you work for six months or 12 months on an investigation, and quite frankly, you should give it out for free because we think we deserve to hear it for free. Uh, and there's this mentality within the public. So you're caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, really, because the, the, the people with the money, the, the power brokers, won't pay you. And the public um, are not willing to pay for investigative journalism in some cases. So where do you go? I, I noticed that problem myself, and um, what I did is I tried to find a target market. My target market is people who have woken up to the truth about the world government, how more or less most of what we're t- raised to believe is, isn't true, and the people who have fallen into that without a catch net. Um, psychologically speaking, it's actually incredibly traumatic to have your current view of reality um, warped, as it were, uh, to the point where you, you almost don't believe anything the establishment says in the world. You, your, whole, your whole life falls apart. That's my target audience, those people who are in that state of trauma, who want to have a few laughs and be able to survive. That's, that's basically it. And I find uh, if I do it for them for free, they appreciate it and watch it. And if I ask for donations, they give them to me when I need them. And only as much as I need. That's that's what I found very interesting. It doesn't matter how much I ask for, I'll only get exactly enough to pay the bills. Um, which, mm. to, which to me is um, quite synchronistic in a way. I, I recall one morning uh, I, I was waking up stressed because I had my rent due, my uh, car needed to be fixed, and you know all, all of these other general expenses that people uh, with a with a nine to five uh, regular paycheck and what have you um, are, are a bit of a pain. But but for somebody who doesn't have that regular income, it can be actually incredibly stressful to live under. And I calculated it in my head while I was walking uh, from my bedroom to my computer uh, to start work. 
And I said, I needed about 500 bucks. So I went to my PayPal, and there was an exact $500 donation sitting in there by uh, one of my listeners. You know? I think it's uh, when you're doing the right thing, uh, the universe shows up to, to support you in some way. Maybe it's a divinity. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. All I know is that I'm grateful both to my listeners and uh, for the fact that I get to do the right thing and I don't hurt people in, in, uh, in the way that I make money. Yeah, I mean, we're certainly um, uh, you know, working towards a model. I mean, with Investigate Magazine, of course, we do the magazine. We have the book publishing company. Uh, we've branched out as, as listeners to the show now know into, into radio on live365.com. Um, and that's different ways of reaching people. I guess, you know, like you, we too find that we have enough to pay the bills. Um, and, and, you know, we have enough to market our products. Uh, we're certainly not, you know, made of money. Uh, we live an average lifestyle and, um, and work hard, work very hard. But I think for me, the real issue is the passion behind the work because I'm not doing it to become a millionaire. And I guess that was the other part of my story. Yeah, yeah. I could have easily, I could have easily changed the, um, uh, the way that I covered things in order to become more commercial. Could have done that with a snap of the fingers, just like that. Uh, and I would have made a, a fortune, but I would have sold my soul. Is that really what we're talking about here is that those journalists who don't make that choice to become independent and to report the truth regardless of what it really costs them, are they actually selling their souls in and of itself to do that? And if so, how can they get them back once they've gone to that? Look, I think it's wider than journalism. Yeah. If you read Totalitaria, if you, if you read Totalitaria um, the essence of that book is that we have been indoctrinated now for decades to effectively subconsciously be prepared for the coming world government regime. That world government regime has a number of commandments that it wants people to believe in. And those commandments are being taught in our school systems, in our universities, in social media conversations. Um, people are just being indoctrinated left, right and centre. The journalists come through that education process the same as everybody else. The journalism courses are as guilty as everybody else of, of uh, indoctrinating young journalists into these belief systems. They don't even know they're doing it. They can't even see that their worldview is corrupting uh, their independence. So we now have a society that is effectively feeding on itself and breaking down. Uh, we're, we're losing the ability to think critically. We're losing the ability to have a, a, a sensible debate. And, and this is one of the things that, that we're trying to provoke with, you know, everything that we're doing. You know, it's interesting you should use the word provoke because, because that's actually what I feel like doing a lot of the times. I mean, I, I, I've never been trained in journalism. I've never actually worked in the industry, although I have spoken to many people within it, um, people who have left it and, and that kind of thing. And I, I recall something you told me um, – I think it might have been even a couple of years ago when I was first starting my show, Ian, that uh, you, you thought that the, uh, what was it, TVNZ blondes, you said, or uh, or that the journalists or airheads. Um, it, it just occurred <laughs> to me that you don't actually need to be that bright um, in this society in order to be respected. Um, you don't even need to be respectful of your readership. In fact, um, one of the... Uh, sorry, sorry, excuse me. Uh, I think it was uh, Diana Clement, I, I think. I'm not sure if you've heard of her, but she's uh, one of the admins of that um, uh, Kiwi Journalists Association. Um, and she told me in a, in a, in a message um, as she was trying to vet me to come into this group in the first place that this group was not for the great unwashed. Now, just that term, the great unwashed, it just smacked to me like she thought she was better than everybody else and sure enough when going into the group the attitude of the uh, other journalists as well seemed to do that and it occurs to me that this is how the hierarchy actually works if you get a whole bunch of people in together who think they're better than everybody else they think it's perfectly justified even in the face of massive hypocrisy to act terribly to other people um it reminds me of the uh, what was it, the Harvard jailing study, I think, where they dressed up students as uh, prisoners and students as guards. And uh, after a very short period of time, the, because the students who were the prisoners had no power whatsoever, they started getting abused and, uh, and taken advantage of by those with the power. 
and I think that's how this um, society is kind of running, um, like champagne glass pyramids, really. Well, if you look at the book Totalitaria again, um, the book documents a secret society that uh, wants to control the planet and control politics and control um, a whole bunch of things. And they've been very successful at doing it, and the book lays out exactly what they've got away with. And they too have this attitude that uh, there's a difference between the great unwashed, the general public as, 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 as we know them, uh, and the initiates. The initiates, the experts, the, the top of the tree uh, will know everything, but the great unwashed will know nothing. Uh, be led carefully and calmly by the nose and directed to believe in certain things, but we can't expect too much of them because they're basic, basically ignorant. And this is in the book, the, you know, the, the, the phrasing of these documents, that, the contempt with which they hold the ordinary people. And they say they have little minds and they can't really know much at all. Therefore, we shouldn't stress them with the details. We'll just take control. And that's what they've proceeded to do. I mean, our schooling system, as I said, our schooling system, our social services, they've all been tainted by this stuff. And so we're seeing effectively... 